Well hello everybody, welcome back to In My Shed. I'm BC and luckily we don't have a horrible rain on today so you might be able to hear me a bit better. I've been asked repeatedly where the heck did I get the info from. So a little bit of show and tell today, I've been collecting books for probably 15 years on the subject. Some of them you fall across on eBay, uh, some you find in other searches and by accident. But these are a basic glimpse, probably a tenth of what I have in books. Some of them are very, very specific, some are general, all of them are damn good. I think we should start with the basic books. And if you haven't got a copy of the Apprentice TAFE notes for fitting and machining, I'd suggest you get them. My copy's out on loan at the moment, but that's a very, very good book. A lot of the older books go into very good explanation, like this Bradley's book on shaping machines and lathe tools. A technical publication from MAP Publishers. And that's one of the better original books. Good place to start. Shows you about basic cutting edges, where the clearance has to be, uh, what is the rake angle. Bit on negative rake for non-ferrous materials. Forming a false edge or built up edge. And then it goes on to describe many different tools. You've got to remember this is back before indexable inserts. I don't know the date on this book, but it would probably go back to the 40s. Different types of tool holders, chamfering tools, corner tools, and look at that. A fabulous method to part off without the tool trying to jump out of the tool post. An overhead steady on the cutter. Excellent money. Spent. My grandfather said that if you buy a book and you learn one thing, it's a bargain. Well, I quite agree. See if there's a date on it. Nineteen forty-nine. I wasn't wrong. So if you can get hold of a copy of that, especially if you're starting off, it's a good place to go. Any cutting tool is a single-edge tool multiplied by the number of flutes. So if you learn single tool edge theory such as this, single point cutting tools, it's a very, very good place to start. Now, if you hunt around for a while, you can pick up books like this. A tool and cutter grinder manual. It's an original, uh, it's an almost new condition, and I think it was about $60. So, it's very, very specific to the cable grinder, which is, of course, no longer made. But full of good pictures, good setups, You can see the modern tool and cutter grinders, once again from the 1950s or 60s. Basic tool setups, and one thing that these show you are the individual accessories. Some you can build, some you have to buy, but you get an idea of what goes with a tool and cutter grinder. A lot of accessories, they used to kit them up really, really well. Now another thing they give you is a good rundown on what grinding wheels to use and where they're used, methods of grinding and this shows you how to set the wheel up to get the required clearance in a couple of different ways. Excellent book. And towards the back it gives you actual setup for grinding several different cutters. That was a bargain. Bit of specific manuals. Clarkson Tool and Cutter Grinder Handbook with a whole lot of cocky cack on it. A little bit on cutter geometry. This is actually very good because the machine was originally made just for sharpening Clarkson cutters, so it's all around high speed steel cutting tools. Notes on setting up. And once again, the accessories that come with the tool. And in the back of it, is the chart of describing what wheels you should use for different jobs, different indexing fingers, and the chart for reliefs and clearances. 
So a very, very good book to get. Write some very specific instructions for grinding radius tools. I can't remember where I picked this up, but it obviously printed off on the computer printer. Some more good info. It's a Clarkson book and a couple more. These are only brochures. There's been a lot of really good textbooks written over the years. I don't know how well that's coming up. It's Machine Shop Practice by K.H. Moltrecht, Volume 2. I haven't been able to get hold of Volume 1. Uh, this one has the tool and cutter grinder information in the back of it. Really good drawings and photos. Uh, good explanation. This fellow is an absolute genius. This is the sort of information you get. You might not be able to read it. Radial roll and axial tilt required to obtain true clearance angle for a given corner angle. So whenever you're doing more than one surface at a time, you get an inherent error. And this tells you how to correct it. It's information like that that it's valuable. Really, really valuable. A lot of setups on the old tool and cutter grinders. But we're getting into more mod materials. That's a Series 2 Cincinnati, so it's probably late 60s, early 70s. Good value for money. I'd recommend that to anybody who wants to go that little bit further in tool grinding. It's also a very good uh, workshop theory book. Or workshop practice, sorry, he calls it. Now I picked this up because I have a similar air bearing tool. Mine isn't a Weldon, but uh, this is very, very good information. It shows all the accessories to go with it. Basic fixture, what parts come with it. Installation of the machine. The setting up of the finger for center height and I had never thought of using an overhead bar and a gauge block to set up center height. A lot of good information in that. Once again, that was an eBay buy. Uh, good value. I don't mind buying things. Now here's a manual for a relief grinding fixture, similar to the machine I have. From the wood company over in Perth. On cam grinding. Another good buy. Here's a good book, Metal Cutting and Design of Cutting Tools, Jigs and Fixtures. Uh, this is written by an Indian fellow for his PhD, and this is Design of Cutting Tools. We're getting into a little bit of heavy information here. Uh, geometry of Chip Formation, uh, an analogy of the analysis or other of the forces involved. Uh, this is if you want to take the information a little bit further. I don't think he originated a lot of this information, but he's put it together in a really good form and it's all information that comes together as a group. A lot of higher mathematics that I failed at in this book, but once again, worth the money. Uh, grinding machines, their design and um, mechanics behind it by Thomas Shaw. It has a lot of higher theory in it, but it was written probably in the late 20s, early 30s. So if you want to look at some very, very old machines, some of them even overhead belt driven, it's not bad. It's so-so. One of my favourite books, Advanced Machine Work by Smith, it comes from Lindsay Publications. Now this is late 20s, I think. 1925. This is about tool making um, before you even had fancy dial micrometers. Some of the setups here are very, very good. This is where I first read about using 
Toolmaker's buttons. Once again, some of the machines are overhead belt driven. And here it gives the information on how to cut the flutes on taps, how to grind them. So very in-depth, if you're into special cutting tools, okay, but it gives you information you just won't find elsewhere. Even making bevel gears and worm gears. Now, down to specific books. Only the Yanks could have a cutting tool institute. I don't believe what they have there of. Member of Society of Manufacturing Engineers for about 10 years and I got their tool and manufacturing engineering handbooks. But to have an institute just for cutting tools, it's hard to believe. Um, good values. This was pretty expensive, about $150 I think. It's a reference book. But this is the sort of information you get here. How to uh, split the point and thin the point for different operations. The effects of each individual job. The force changes in the cutting edge at the centre. Different methods of grinding drills and the type of swarf you would expect coming off the drill. Top of the hole, middle of the hole, at breakthrough. Different ways to grind the point. Crankshaft or split point drills. Once again, the sort of swarf you'd expect to come off it. Different types of web thinning and what sort of chips you would expect and where you use these different grinds. Heavy duty aircraft drill point and what you'd expect of chips. A lot of good information. It's worth every cent. It's written in uh, plain English, even the simple bloke like me can understand it. But if you want to learn about the design and regrinding of cutting tools, and it goes through all high speed steel cutting tools, a little bit of carbide, and it shows the regrind procedures and setups and what to expect and where to grind. And little hints you pick up in books like this, for instance, grinding onto the cutting edge rather than grinding off the cutting edge and the difference in what you produce and how it will perform. So that was a good read. Once again, some things I picked up on the internet. If you go to the Royal Oak website, they have an article called Stop Losing Money. It tells you why you should sharpen high-speed steel tools, when to sharpen them, and how to sharpen them. And of course, if you use one of their grinders, everything will go a hell of a lot better. But it's free off the internet. Fantastic information, all about chip formation, above centre grinding, last diameter drills, drill thinning, good information. Okay, tool grinding fundamentals by Johnson, comes from Royal Oak, Universal Form Relief Equipment, that's the brand of attachment I have. That won't come out very, very good on the screen for you guys. But setting up the machine, types of wheels and recommendations. What happens with grinding fluid? That's a very interesting read. Uh, polishing the tools and what you get out of polishing. And tool grinding fundamentals. Here they explain the difference between axial and radial relief and peripheral relief. Making of step drills. And a lot about feeds and speeds. So if you want to learn a little bit about the manufacture of cutting tools, Tool Grinding Fundamentals by Royal Oak. So that's the end of this part of the story. There's a lot more to tools than I ever thought. There's a, you have a lot of grinding tools. But you get used to it, I suggest you all give it a go. It is a really good uh, operation, something that saves you money. Bye for now.